Despite the fact that Jesus, peace be upon him, is one of the most significant personalities to have ever walked the earth, he is also perhaps the most misunderstood and misrepresented person in history. Just who is Jesus? What is his nature? God? Man? Both? This video will examine some reasons from the Bible why Jesus cannot be God. The doctrine of the Trinity defines God as one being, who exists eternally as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Each person is said to be fully God, yet Trinitarians believe they are not three gods, but one God. A key element of the Trinity is the Incarnation. This teaches that the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, took on human flesh in the bodily form of Jesus. Thus, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, God entered into the creation as a human being. However, such beliefs contradict what the Bible teaches about God's nature. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. The Bible defines God's nature as eternal and unchanging. Indeed, God cannot change because he transcends time. So the claim that God became flesh is a contradiction. Such beliefs also call into question God's perfection. Since God is the pinnacle of perfection, there is no need for him to become anything. If something needs to be added to his nature, such as humanity or anything else for that matter, then doesn't that mean he lacked something before? Which state is considered more godly, the pre-incarnation God or post-incarnation God? You can see that the doctrine of the incarnation puts Trinitarians in a blasphemous predicament. Trinitarians try to get around this problem by arguing that when God became a man, a human nature was merely added to God's existing divine nature. Since the two natures did not mix, the divine nature did not change at all, and so God remained the same. Can this be considered valid reasoning? Well, if God added a new nature to himself, then that is a change in state. Was God always a man? He was not. Did he become a man? According to Trinitarians, he did. So to claim that God did not change is nothing more than philosophical wordplay. The New Testament mentions an incident with Jesus and a fig tree. Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. We are told that Jesus approached a fig tree because he was hungry, and when he realized it had no fruit, he became angry and cursed it. Now such an incident makes no sense in light of the Trinitarian claim that Jesus is fully God. God is all-knowing. So if Jesus really is God, then that would make him the creator of fig trees. In which case, how could he have been ignorant of the fact that it was not the season for figs? If Trinitarians want to argue that it was the limited human nature that made this mistake, then why did the divine nature act on the mistake of the human nature? Is this a case of the human nature overriding the divine nature? Is such a thing possible? Moreover, why would God curse the fig tree for producing fruit in certain seasons, something he himself willed it to do? If Jesus is God, then wouldn't it have been more befitting of him to command the tree to bear fruit? Why ruin a perfectly good tree? Come fig season, this tree would have had fruit and others could have eaten from it. We can see that when it comes to the knowledge of Jesus, it seems that either the divine nature is lacking or completely absent. How then can the claim be made that Jesus is fully God? From what we've seen, it seems that Jesus is human, but not divine because he lacks essential attributes of God, such as possessing all knowledge. 
Moreover, such divine shortcomings aren't just restricted to Jesus. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit also lacks God's perfect knowledge. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Here Jesus categorically states that no one, which includes himself and the Holy Spirit, knows the hour, but only the Father. Since they both lack the Father's knowledge, the Trinitarian claim that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are equal is false. The co-equality of the persons is a central pillar, without which the foundation of the Trinity comes crashing down. There is an interesting incident according to the New Testament, where a Jewish teacher of the law approaches Jesus and asks him which of the commandments is the most important. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. This incident was the perfect opportunity for Jesus to correct Jewish misconceptions about God's nature and give a Trinitarian understanding. As you can see, the exact opposite is the case. By quoting the Old Testament commandment about God being one and agreeing with the Jewish teacher's interpretation, Jesus is affirming a Jewish understanding of God that is purely monotheistic and rejects all notion of God being a trinity. Not only is the Jewish teacher's wisdom about God acknowledged, but Jesus goes so far as to compliment him, saying that he is close to the kingdom of God. In another incident, Jesus prays to God and says, Father, the hour has come. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Notice that Jesus identifies the Father as the only true God to the exclusion of himself, the Son. Now if Jesus really is part of a trinity, then he would have said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the only true God. From these examples, it's clear that Jesus followed in the footsteps of the prophets of the Old Testament such as Abraham and Moses. Does it make sense that God would send countless prophets over a span of thousands of years with a consistent message of pure monotheism only to all of a sudden reveal that he is a trinity, a radically different message which contradicts his previous prophets' teachings? Muslims respect and love Jesus as a great prophet of God. In fact, Islam holds a unique position among world religions as it is the only religion other than Christianity that acknowledges Jesus as the Messiah. You may be surprised to know that Jesus is mentioned more times by name in the Quran than Muhammad, peace be upon them both, and that Mary, the mother of Jesus, even has a chapter of the Quran named after her. God, out of his mercy for mankind, resolved all of the confusion surrounding Jesus by revealing the Quran. The Quran puts forward a clear picture of both God and Jesus that is easy to understand. People of the book, Jews and Christians, do not go to excess in your religion and do not say anything about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was nothing more than a messenger of God, his word directed to Mary, a spirit from him. So believe in God and his messengers and do not speak of a trinity. Stop this. That is better for you. God is only one God. He is far above having a son. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to him, and he is the best one to trust. Jesus is not God, or even the literal Son of God. Rather, he is a man, messenger, and messiah. He is a creation of God, just like the messengers that God sent before him, such as Abraham and Moses. 
God, by contrast, is unique and separate from his creation. Islam is a religion of clear guidance. There is no confusion about who God is and who Jesus is. The Quran provides the simplest, easiest and most accessible description about the nature of God. A healthy relationship with our Creator is only possible when we understand who He is.